Hey everybody, RetroPyGuy here. Today I'm going to show you how to set up the brand new Sega Dreamcast emulator called ReDream. So this brand new emulator is actually a really amazing emulator. We're able to now play a lot more Dreamcast games and we're actually able to play them super well. The issue with the older emulator for RetroPy was that we had a very limited amount of games that ran smoothly. On the RetroPy Guy 256 gigabyte game collection card that we have, we only have about 24 or 25 utilizing that older emulator. So on our 512 gigabyte game collection card, we're actually able to have 93 games available. So it's a huge jump and they all run super well. So the settings do differ quite a bit from the old Dreamcast emulator on RetroPy. So I want to get into that today and show you exactly how to go about setting these up. Because if you jump into your Dreamcast games, you're going to find that even if you've already mapped your controller and you jump into these, they're not necessarily going to carry over and you're actually not going to be able to exit your games. Your hotkey function will not work, so you're going to have to go through some different setting options here in order to set everything up. So a couple of things that we're going to need in order to set this up is we're obviously going to need our gamepad controller, which I would recommend doing something with analog sticks versus, um, you know, like a Super Nintendo or, or something like that that just doesn't have enough controls um, built into it to utilize these Dreamcast games. So PlayStation controller works great. It's got the dual analog sticks. Uh, a bunch of 8-bit dough controllers work really well as well. So just something to consider before you go in and start um, mapping your controls for Dreamcast games. You want to make sure that you have a controller that can actually play those games properly. Um, that being said, we also are going to need a USB keyboard in order to set this up. So now I'm going to be using this wireless keyboard that we have available on our website. It's fully wireless, connects through the USB port on your Raspberry Pi. Super easy to use. It's got these backlit um, options too, so you can change colors. I think they're about $15 on our website. We'll put a link in the description below so you can check these out if you don't already have a keyboard. Um, it's just nice to use these for the various things that you might need on the RetroPie system, you know, entering on Wi-Fi credentials, uh, altering settings like we're doing today, just stuff like that. It's super nice to have a very compact keyboard so you're not working off of a full-size keyboard, you know, that's wired in. This is just so much more convenient. So uh, that being said, first thing we're going to do is we're going to pick up our controller. We're going to navigate to our Dreamcast games. Once we get to them here, we'll open this right up. Now you can jump into any game. It really makes no difference because we're going to be utilizing the settings here. So I'm going to jump into this game, this Capcom game here. We're going to let it load in, so you'll see this now loading page. Once you get past that, just make sure that your USB receiver is plugged into your Raspberry Pi for your keyboard. So on my Raspberry Pi, if you looked at it, I have two receivers, one for my PlayStation controller and one for my keyboard. All right, so once our game loads in, we're going to take our keyboard here. We're going to hit the escape button. That's going to bring us right into our Redream settings page here. So now we have to navigate over to input. So now the navigating on this is kind of strange. We're not going to be utilizing our arrow keys like you would think we'd be doing or our enter button. We actually have to use a combination of our letter buttons here. So in order to go left, we have to hit A. In order to go up, we have to hit W. In order to go down, we have to hit S. And in order to go right, we have to hit D. Now to make our selections, we have to hit the L button. This is a really strange way of doing it, but it is what it is. So you can see here we are um, currently highlighted on the save button here. Now you might be highlighted in a different spot. Everybody's system might be a little bit different with this. So you first need to hit one of these buttons just to see where you're at. I was on the save button there. So this is where I started on save. So you can actually, like I said before, we'll put this in the description as well, but it, it will be the W button to go up. So I hit W, I'm up on the exit now. You can see that um, yellow underline under exit. So now I wanna go to the left. In order to go left, I'm gonna hit the A button and I wanna go over to input. Once I'm on input, I'm gonna hit the L button here to select it. So just like that, we jump into our inputs here. So you can see that on port zero, it's registering the keyboard here. So we wanna go ahead and select this option. We're gonna hit the L button to select this because we wanna change this port to configure our controller here. So once we do that, we'll hit uh, input device again, L there, and you can see that now you'll have different options here. So my next option down from auto here is the TGZ controller, which is actually my PlayStation controller right here. 
So if we go down with the S and we select that with L, we're now gonna be configuring this controller over here. So we'll be able to no longer be using this and we'll be able to control everything from this once we set everything up. So we're gonna go down to customize binds first. We've already selected which device we wanna be customizing. So we'll go down here and select L to confirm this selection. So here you can see I've actually already done this. So I'm gonna actually just navigate over and reset this just so I can walk through the exact uh, bind configuration for you. All right, so this is how it would look for you since you haven't set this up yet. So you wanna actually navigate over from the X, you wanna be actually where it says left joystick up. So in order to do that, we're gonna hit the A button. And that's going to highlight, you can see where it's highlighted now, the actual function. All right, so once we've selected that first option, we're gonna now select it again on here and use our gamepad controller that we're setting up to map each function to this specific controller. So we hit the L to select this, it says waiting. So now we're going to do left joystick up, which is right there. So now you have to navigate down. So we'll hit the S, S, we'll go over to the left again. We'll select this option now, which is left joystick down, left joystick down. So now for left joystick left, we're going to select that option and we're gonna go left. So this process does take a little bit of time it's not as uh, user-friendly as RetroPie's main mapping section, but again, it is what it is. We're at least going to have a really great emulator once this is fully mapped. So next option is left joystick right. Same thing, go to the right. You do have to just make sure you see that when I did that, it jumped over to the X because it actually saved the mapping from our gamepad controller and also um, took advantage of that function direction that we were doing on there. So. Now we have to go down and to the left on our keyboard in order to set this up for the next option. All right, so now on here, we're going to hit L again. Now we're doing the D-pad, D-pad up. Go down on our keyboard, hit L, D-pad down on our gamepad controller. Down to the next option on the keyboard, L, D-pad left. Next option down, L, D-pad right. And now left trigger. Now for this particular emulator, you can do um, your left trigger as your shoulder button or as your trigger, however you wanna do it. I'm actually gonna do it as my shoulder button, but again, you can configure these however you want. If you wanna change up the buttons, I'm just doing it how I would do it and showing you the walkthrough tutorial here. I'm just doing it how I would do it and showing you, you know, exactly how you would navigate through all these functions. You can obviously change these around and um, you know, configure this however you want. So next option down, left trigger, L. I'm gonna just do my left shoulder instead. Down to right trigger, select L. Right shoulder, which I'm doing as the trigger. So now we have to go to the right. In order to go to the right, we hit the D button. You have to use that twice. I'm gonna go all the way up to the top here by hitting the W and start with the A button and work my way back down. So same thing, hit the L on your keyboard, now hit the A button. So if you actually are using this wireless PlayStation style controller that we have on our website, this actually matches up really well with the Dreamcast controllers. You can see that the A on here matches up with the A on the screen. Same with B, Y, X, all that. All right, continuing on, we are gonna go down with S again select the B button, B button on our gamepad controller, S again to go down, L to confirm, X on our gamepad controller, now the Y button, and now the start button. So for turbo, you can do this again, however you want based on your specific controller. I'm going to be using that um, left trigger button since I did my trigger previously as the shoulder button. Again, do it however you feel comfortable, however you want that setup to be on your specific controller. So S to go down to turbo, L to select it, hit the button you want. Now you can skip screenshot, you can utilize it, whatever you wanna do. I'm just gonna do that as my R trigger.
and main menu I actually just skip but you can again use it to whatever button you want you can use some of these extra buttons on here whatever you want to do I'm just going to skip it in this case here all right so this next option here is exit emulator this is going to be our hotkey so on this controller and on most controllers unless you have the 8-bit dough and you want to utilize some of the extra buttons you're going to be using the select here so L to confirm that hit the select button on your controller and you're good to go. So now there is no save button. It automatically saves upon exit on here. So don't go down and hit reset binds thinking that that's going to um, save everything and reset it from what it was when you first got on here. If you hit reset binds, you're going to wipe out everything you just did and start this process over. Um, as much fun as this was, I don't want to do it again. Neither do you. Don't hit reset binds. If you hit something wrong on here, and you know, say you went to, um, configure and map your Y button and you hit the X by mistake, just jump over with the D button to this little X here, hit L and, and do that. I'll actually do it here just to demo that. You'll see that it wipes out that selection, which is nice. We don't have that function in uh, the regular built-in mapping on RetroPie. So that's one nice thing that I like about this over the um, stock RetroPie mapping. So I'm just gonna map this again real quick and we're good to go. So in order to get out of here, hit your W button, navigate up to the top. It jumps onto the exit there. You can hit the L button. You should be actually able to do this from your controller now, which you are. So let's test this out, make sure everything worked. You can set aside our keyboard. We don't need that anymore. So I'm able to navigate here. I will jump into a game. And we'll just make sure that we can properly utilize our hotkey and jump out of this. And then we know that everything did save properly and we're good to go. So we're just gonna give this a minute to load up. I did mute all of my audio here. So that's why you're not hearing any sound as that uh, Dreamcast screen loads in. All right, so if we hit the start button you can see everything's working. We were able to advance by hitting start before we weren't able to do that because this was not configured. So let's just see, I'm not gonna waste time jumping into this game or anything, but let's make sure that we can we can move around with that. Same thing here. Um, yeah, everything works. So let's hit our hotkey, which is select and start. Just like that, we've exited our ROM, so we're good to go here. All right, so that's gonna do it for today. I just wanted to walk you through the process for setting up your gamepad controller with Redream. I think you're really gonna enjoy this brand new Sega Dreamcast emulator. It works so much better than the other one did um, with so many more game options too. And I think it's only gonna get better with future updates too. So um, once we've gone through this mapping process and fully set everything up, um, I really think you're gonna enjoy this. So um, if you found this video helpful, please give us a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We do a whole bunch of different tutorials like this, gameplay demos, product reviews, um, previews of different products that we have available. So definitely subscribe to our YouTube channel to stay up to date on everything that we're doing. And of course, check us out online on our website, www.retrobyguy.com. Thanks for watching.